Cameron Payne has been an absolute pleasure to watch this season. He has morphed himself into this floor general, getting his teammates into the right position with his skillful passing and his aggressive drives, as well as reading what the defense gives him. It doesn't just stop there. Payne has been lights out from the three-point line, converting on 44% of his threes, and has been an absolute menace on the defensive end, regularly picking up 90 feet. He's been the driving and commanding force of the Sun's second unit, and you really can't ask any more from a backup point guard. But this wasn't always the type of performance you would get from Cameron Payne. Believe it or not, he was one of the worst players in the league, and that was a consensus notion the coaches and players had about him. Listen to what JJ Redick had to say about Cam's earlier years in the league. But early in his career, I remember telling people like Cam Payne is not an NBA player. I have no idea why that guy was a lottery pick. I remember telling people that. Brutal, but the truth. So let's take a deep dive and look at the story of Cameron Payne. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. The channel is really growing right now, so join the community. With that being said, let's get into the video. Payne, unlike many of the players that were drafted to the league, was not this high school phenomenon. He did not put up these godly numbers and was barely known to the basketball community. Don't get me wrong though, his high school career was not tragic. He did lead his team to a Division II state title in Tennessee, but still, no one really knew him. In fact, on most sites, he wasn't even ranked, with just the exception of Rivals.com, which gave him three stars. Lucky, because those three stars got some colleges to raise their eyebrows, and eventually, he elected to attend Murray State. There, he got thrusted into the starting point guard role after an injury to their initial starter, and Isaiah Cannon making a jump to the NBA. Payne delivered on his freshman season, putting up 17-5-4, and, and earning the title of Freshman of the Year from the conference. He was able to build off of this hype in his sophomore season, improving across the board and earning comparisons to Damian Lillard. So naturally, Payne declared for the NBA draft, and the Oklahoma City Thunder drafted him with the 14th overall pick. The situation he got put into wasn't the most ideal. The Thunder at the time were in win-now mode with their core, so Payne rarely got time on the court to feel the game out, and when he did, he was a pain to watch. He would always turn the ball over, take low IQ shots, and was just overall abysmal to watch, averaging just 5 points on 39% shooting from the field. How he became so known in the NBA circles while virtually contributing nothing on the basketball court was his infamous pre-game handshakes with Russell Westbrook. They were cringe and started to define him as the extension of the Thunder's cheerleading team. His struggles still continued into his sophomore season, but he was still a young player with quite a bit of surprising market value. So Sam Presti flipped him for Todd Gibson, Doug McDermott, and a second round pick. A very lopsided trade considering his time with the Bulls was not only short lived, but a soul crushing one. Fans would ridicule him, and management was not happy with him. In fact, after he was waived, reports came out that Chicago took just two practices to realize Cameron Payne did not belong in the NBA. Why two? Because the first one they chalked up to nerves. That's something you never want to hear. But what could Payne do? Just move forward and prove these people wrong. He was able to get a contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but it was just for 20 days. His stock was so low and people knew him as one of the worst players in the NBA. The Raptors though, known to find diamonds in the rough, took a chance on him and signed him in the 2019 offseason. He played for them in the preseason and that's how far it'd go. The Raptors released him prior to the start of the season. Payne was down bad, but he was still motivated and determined to play in the NBA. So he decided to take the China route, signing with a team whose name I don't even want to butcher. He played well in two contests, averaging 22.5 points, 6 rebounds, 7.5 assists, and 4.5 steals, but felt as though he wasn't getting the playing time he deserved when injured players started returning to the lineup and chipping away at his time. So he decided, well let's hear what he decided to do. I talked to my dad, I'm like, it's time for me to just go and come home and we gonna try the G League. I, 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 got, I feel like I got a better opportunity going through the G League. 
he was like, all right, that's, that's cool with me. Come on back home and we don't get back to work. Payne dominated in his return to the G League. Through 15 games, he was averaging 23 points, 5 rebounds, and 8 assists. Things were going good for him. He was climbing up the ladder of success. But then, he was served another devastating blow. The pandemic. It derailed the climb, halting the G League season. So yet again, when things seemed to be going Payne's way, it didn't. He was down and was getting ready to wash the bubble from his couch. But then someone took a chance on him. I'm in the pool and I wasn't even expecting no call from nobody. I just got a call from another team and they declined and they said no. We went with someone else and I was like, well, I guess I'm going to be watching it. Like, I went to, I got in the pool, he called me and it was just like a dream come true for me, like all over again. Like, it kind of felt like I got drafted again. Like, it was, I was with Monty and like, I'm comfortable with him. Payne was not going to let this moment go to waste. He was going to give it his all and relish the moment. Do everything he can to help the Phoenix Suns win. And he was so grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful to be here. Because four months ago, I went in the NBA. So this is a great, great, great opportunity. And I'm freaking happy. Cameron Payne was a revelation in the bubble. He became a sniper from outside, a menace on his drives, and gave opposing players havoc dribbling up the court. This clearly wasn't the same player we last saw in the NBA. Payne was an NBA player, and a dang good one at that. He helped give birth to the Bubble Suns, helping them go undefeated. But there were still skeptics that this performance was an outlier, that the bubble doesn't count. You hear it, it was probably said to Cameron Payne, but James Jones believed in him and doubled down on him, re-signing him for the next season. For Payne, a dream was becoming a reality, but there was still work to do. He continued to work on his game in the offseason and did not regress at all, serving as a backup point guard to Chris Paul. During the season, he delivered countless times, but none more bigger than Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals. With Chris Paul out because of COVID safety precautions, Cam Payne exploded for a career high and team high 29 points. He helped the Suns take a 2-0 lead on the Clippers and eventually helped them punch their ticket to the NBA Finals. By the end of the season, Cameron Payne might be a champion, but even if he isn't, his journey was not only an exciting one, but an inspiring one. You deserve to dance all you want. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.